And aged care, it's a very complex sector. I mean, as we were talking earlier, um, we all have our own anecdotes, you know, personal experiences about the impacts on the services to those individuals. And thinking about how you deliver value, capture value in that for purpose sector, what are some of the principles that you use to drive change? We try and link it back to solving customer problems. So where we, where we do the value for customers, it's about solving problems. Uh, same with um, for our employees, how do we solve their problems? How do we make their days easier? Let's hassle with the tech. Obviously, we provide technology to 10,000 staff, so we don't want that to get in the way. They're not there to use the tech. They mm -hmm. are there to uh, help and care for the elderly. And they, they can do so in, in any of a number of different settings in our homes, our nursing homes, or customers own homes or in retirement villages that we happen to own as a property set up. And as we, as we provide our tech services, we, we try and make it, let's solve a problem with it or have, make it have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, you know, in a way, trying to bring stakeholders with you, it relates back to that conversation about how you market um, the value of these IT services mm -hmm. that are going to be I guess improving the carer's experience firstly, your own staff, um, and then seeing what impacts that has on your customers, the individuals in care. What have been some of the challenges um, when trying to improve those services to customers and how have you tried to work around those? To customers in particular, the, the challenge is to make them take up tech. We have an age demographic and we have 75 plus, so the, the uptake of technology is not there for a lot of them. Um, and the way we've addressed making them pick up technology and use it and become regulars in it is to, to make it solve those problems for them. Social connection, how do we connect them better with their families? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we let them see pictures of their grandkids? How do we let their families see photos of what grandma's been doing uh, throughout her day? What is her social engagement throughout the day? If the families are overseas or interstate, particularly in the last couple of years, how do we use video technology or video calling as a way to uh, let them talk and see each other? Mm -hmm and engage and make sure that both sides are doing well and, and see the growth in kids and grandkids and also how grandma's doing. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful when you put it like that, the ability of technology to give our families those insights into their nearest and dearest, if you like, and particularly the last couple of years, you know, there's been some complications, of course, um, and trying to just make sure that it's almost like a seamless experience for you know, the family, the individual and the, and, and the staff as well. And I'm just thinking um, about how you use data in those kinds of respects. Obviously, the Aged Care Royal Commission talked about um, making better use of data, mm. creating it once, using it many times. Thinking about some of those recommendations, how are you using data at Bolton Clark to drive experience and drive improvement? So what we, <clears throat> what we try and do is to have a single view of our customers, the basic, make sure we can do that. And, and we're, being in aged care, we're um, an industry with traditionally very low tech uptake, both on the inside of the aged care organisations and, and outside. So we, we've been on um, the traditional journey for many years, making sure we, we, we have solid views of who our customers are, what services they get from us, um, how we interact with them, what interactions we've had, and then use that as, as the foundation piece for uh, what more can we do for them? How can we better serve them? Are, they, are their situations changing? Can we look at the clinical data and determine are they high, at high risk of falls? Mm -hmm. uh, is dementia starting to creep in? Can we find that out from the information we know about them? And can we deduce that um, so that we can prompt our nurses to go and check for those things and, and make sure they can put in place remediations for that or programs to help them um, improve on physical or mental decline? Because mm -hmm. that, is, that is the nature of our industry, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, particularly with that dementia piece and, you know, trying to be very empathetic mm. with how we're <coughs> interacting with our customers sounds like it's a very important thing for, for Bolton Clark and similar organisations in that sector to be focusing on. And as I understand it, you know, the aged care seems like a very collaborative ecosystem yeah. where a lot of organisations are often working together to share learning and to try and introduce predictive an analytics in a way that will help you get access to better da data, wider data that you can then use in your own practice. Can you talk a little bit perhaps to 
how Bolton Clark's trying to collaborate with the rest of the ecosystem and what outcomes that's driving. Yeah, so <clears throat> we have um, a research institute. So one of the things it does is it, it does exactly that. It collates information from our internal customers. Being a large organization, we have a lot of internal data. But they also engage external to our organization. And what we do as, as the technology crew is we make sure that we get all the data in the right places for them to do what they need to do with it mm -hmm. and do their analysis, be it whether it's the collection piece or the analysis piece at the end and work with that. Also through uh, networks like Edge and other CO networks I'm part of, we collaborate on, on, on those things and say, how can we make things better for our clients as a, as a group of organizations? We're all friendly competitors, really, in mm -hmm. the industry, uh, particularly those who are. We are not-for-profit. Other organizations are for-profit, but it's a collaborate, collaboration around making things better across the, uh, the continuum of care because mm -hmm. we do have a large and a long continuum of care. Mm -hmm. It's really thinking about that life cycle, isn't yeah. it? You know, how you Im improve those outcomes, you know, be more f customer first in terms of the technology interventions that you bring in. And, you know, we heard earlier today um, from some of the sessions that, you know, capturing value, measuring value is a critical part of becoming future ready. So to be able to prioritise innovation in a way that's really effective and get the funding that you need to drive those changes. So. In the for-purpose sector, if you like, how is the funding conversation different? We have, we have the exact same funding conversation in principle around we have to make a profit. If we don't make a profit as an organisation, we, we go out of business. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's the nature of it. Where we get, <clears throat> we answer to, we're an organisation governed by a trust. We have um, a purpose in that trust of serving Australians. And we have, a, our trust is around the returned servicemen and their families and the broader society. So it's a very broad purpose. But the, the thing we always do, we fall back to that and then we say, what do we do? What do we prioritise here? And we, we always prioritise the care over the dollars. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we look at it and say, what, what is the sustainable level of care? Where can we draw that line. So that's the difference for us is that we, we don't look at a quarter, we don't have to do a quarterly statement, we don't have investors to justify ourselves to. We have a board who are the custodians of a trust and they follow that philosophy throughout the organisation. So mm -hmm. it becomes different in that you're not chasing the dollar. But you're always, as me as well, when we do digital straight to customer, we are very cognizant of uh, that there needs to be a return on this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it becomes a cost overhead and in due course, if, if money looks bad in, in given years in future, those services will be cut. Mm -hmm. If we make themselves sustainable, they'll be retained because they, they sustain themselves. They don't necessarily have to be hugely profitable, just pay for themselves mm -hmm. and they're a, so a valuable that, addition. Yeah, so being a value add, if you like, rather than necessarily than a cost cutting. We also get much, yes, and we also get much more traction with improvements in care. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, that's a metric that we use. Can we improve care? Will this improve care? Will we reduce medication errors, for example, in medication rounds in our, in our nursing homes? If we do, that is a, it's a, seen as a very valuable additional piece to what we do. Mm -hmm. and so it's not just about the cost and the return on the financial investment, it's the return on the improvement in care. Mm -hmm. so, it's a, so a lot of this all seems to come back to that experience. So the yep. experience for your staff, the experience for the individuals in care, and the the experience for that ecosystem around the individual. And you touched on metrics just briefly there. What are some of the metrics that matter when you're trying to improve experience, when you're trying to reduce medication and intervention? Uh, well, medication and intervention has clinical indicators, so that's a slightly different thing. But the, 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 the metrics that really matter are the customer experience, the net promoter score, if you wish. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, do, we try and do that both internally with our staff. So as an IT department, we, we gauge how well we're doing and we ask them, did we do well enough for you this time? Same with our customers. We try and, and, and go out and engage with them as much as we can to ask them how we're going. What are we doing right? What are we not doing right? And then use those opportunities to, to improve. Mm -hmm. It's a really simple concept. And in IT, it's not a promoter score. They're not promoting us from further sales. But it is, did we do well enough? Mm -hmm. Did you improve their experience, basically? Yes. Did we, did we, do, did we deliver a good experience for you? Because mm -hmm. if we did not, it's not good enough. No. Right? It's, it's finding that baseline of good. Uh, and one of the key ones, which is a, a major one for us, is um, false risk. It comes up all the time. And when you get elderly, one of the big problems you have is you'll, you'll stumble over a low, uh, something like a low cable or something on the ground. So it's, uh, and you'll do so because you get more unstable. So we mm -hmm. try and come up with secondary indicators as to is your false risk increasing? And if it is, 
as something we have a lot of metrics on. We have in-home sensors, as an example, and we can use those to determine whether or not you walk slower or faster than you used to. And if you walk slower, that's an indicator that you might be less stable than you were. Um, and if you have those sort of indicators, those are the kind of things we use to, from a research perspective, mm -hmm. to, to put in the interventions, give them physio, or give them therapy or exercises or put them in the gym, whatever it might be, to make them fitter and healthier, they can live a healthy life and happy mm -hmm. life for longer, Fantastic. which is really a metric we try and meet. Mm. No, I, know, I think that's quite important as the, the population ages and frailty and, and things like this come into, come into play. And just finally, um, thinking about some of the conversations you've had today across CIO Edge and reflecting on some of your experiences to date, what's perhaps one last message you would want to leave with the community? The only way you know whether you're doing well or well enough is to set a, set a baseline and measure it which is the same, the, the value capture piece, uh, are you measuring it? If you're not, do you, how do you know whether you're doing well enough?